Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Horror Mine. My name is Vic Shy, and this is The Scare Score, where I break down horror movies and rate them on how scary I think they are. In this episode, we're going over the 2019 Indonesian horror film, The Queen of Black Magic. Directed by Kimo Stambol and written by Joko Anwar, this remake tells a completely different story than the 1981 original. This is actually the film that inspired me to start a horror movie YouTube channel in the first place. Almost one year and 55 videos later, I'm finally getting to cover this film. Better late than never, I suppose. The film tells the story of three men who return to the old orphanage they grew up in as the man who raised them has fallen ill. Dark secrets come to light and plenty of blood is shed as the titular Queen of Black Magic attempts to make their lives a living hell. I'll be breaking down the entire movie as our handy dandy scare score decides how effective the scares are throughout the film. This film is an absolute blast and reminded me of why I love horror movies in the first place. But how scary is it? Sit back and relax and join me as we explore the queen of black magic and tally up the scare score. Our movie begins by introducing us to our main characters, husband Hanif, his wife Nadia, their children Dina, Sandy, and youngest Haki. Hanif is portrayed by actor Ario Bayou, who played Kisap Tadi in Joko Anwar's Empedigore, which I covered on last week's Scare Score. The family is heading to the orphanage where Hanif grew up to visit the old man who raised him who has fallen ill. While having a laugh at Haki's expense, a distracted Hanif runs over something on the road. They see a dead deer on the side of the road, but we see that he's actually hit something a little more human. And yes, that title sequence made me jump. They arrive at the orphanage and are greeted by Maman and his wife Siti. Maman and Siti have been at the orphanage since they were kids and never left. We are also introduced to Hanif's brothers, Anton and Jeffrey, along with their wives Effa and Lina. They meet two children from the orphanage, Hasbi and Rani, and Maman says the rest of the children will be back later tonight from their bus trip. Hanif introduces Nadia to Mr. Bandi, the man who raised him, Anton and Jeffrey, who is now sick with an unknown illness and doesn't speak. Hanif speaks highly of Mr. Bandi and believes that he and his brothers would have died if it weren't for him. Hasbi shows the children to their bedroom and Dina takes a pretty fast and obvious liking to him. Hasbi has lived at the orphanage since he was a baby and says that Rani's mother left her when she was 10. However, Rani assures them that she wasn't abandoned and that her mother will be back. Dina points at a door which Hasbi says hasn't been opened for a very long time. It wouldn't be a true horror movie without one of those now, would it? Haki becomes curious about the door and Rani tells him a pretty creepy story about it. She tells of a woman who used to work at the orphanage named Miss Mira. One day, Miss Mira left the orphanage with a young girl named Murni. She came back without Murni and claimed that she had been taken by a demon. They locked Mira inside the room where she repeatedly banged her head on the door to be let out. When they finally opened the door, Miss Mira was dead and Murni was never found. Some will recognize Murni as the name of the main character from the original film portrayed by actress Susanna, known as the Indonesian Horror Queen. While looking at old photos, Haki finds an old album with a picture of Miss Mira and Murni. Anton seems pretty taken aback by the photo and says that Miss Mira got sick and passed away. Nadia asks Hanif about Mira and Murni and he seems just as troubled as Anton by the subject. The brothers have a conversation about what will happen to the orphanage if Mr. Bandi passes away. Jeffrey says that Bandi's real children are interested in selling it or turning the place into a resort. Anton is worried about what will be discovered if the place is sold but Hanif assures him that it won't be. Hanif looks at the front of his car and finds a bloodied piece of clothing and hair. He and Jeffrey drive back to the scene of the accident where they discover the body of the young girl who fell victim to Hanif's bad driving habits. They then find the bus with the orphans but discover that they are all dead. The police station is two hours away because of course it is and the rules clearly state that there shall be no cell phone reception. Jeffrey suggests going back to the orphanage and calling from the landline but just like me, Maman hasn't paid the phone bill. 
During dinner, we learn a little bit more about Eva and Lena. Lena is on a diet because she feels like she is overweight. Eva continuously sprays sanitizer on her hands because she previously had a rash that she believes was a flesh-eating virus. Having stayed in the orphanage, Mama and Siti live very different lives than the others. However, they clearly love and value one another, which is what's truly important. We learn that Siti accidentally poured hot water on her face as a child. In a very touching moment, Haki calls her beautiful and gives her a kiss. After dinner, Rani shows Haki a VHS tape of Miss Mira. She had a broken leg, which resulted in a pretty creepy sound as she walked. Miss Mira is portrayed by actress Ruth Marini, who also played the Dark Priestess in May the Devil Take You. Hanif and Jeffrey return to the house and show Anton the body of the girl in the back of the car. While the three of them freak out and figure out what to do, Nadia watches them from inside the house. They tell Anton about the bus with the dead orphans, and he goes to see it for himself. He he finds the bus at kilometer marker 81, which is a reference to the year the original film came out, 1981. Anton goes inside the bus and sees all the dead orphans standing in their seats. He is suddenly locked inside the bus and sees a strange woman outside. He walks backwards and steps on an egg filled with thousands of insects and sees that the children are now facing him. The insects quickly crawl all over his body and kill Anton in a very brutal fashion. The dead orphans eerily standing there as the bugs murder Anton made for a very well done scare. Back at the orphanage, we can see that a dark presence has been released and that things are about to go south very quickly. Jeff looks out of his bedroom window and sees the same mysterious woman Anton saw in the distance. He has a conversation with Lena where she expresses her concern that she is gaining weight too quickly. She feels even worse about herself when he rejects her sexual advance. She leaves the room and is drawn by a noise to a knife on a table. She looks into a mirror behind her which is making her appear bigger than she actually is. In what is perhaps the film's most disturbing scene, Lena begins cutting off pieces of her own flesh with the knife. The mirror is making it seem like she is easily removing fat from her body and she seems unaware that she is actually harming herself. She snaps back into reality when Jeffrey finds that she has severely mutilated her neck and stomach. In another room, two centipedes fall onto Eva from the ceiling and crawl straight into her mouth. She tries to tell Nadia that the centipedes have got her tongue and ends up spitting blood all over her. She then throws up dozens of centipedes with several still crawling inside of her body. Desperate to get them out, she rips a chunk off of her arm and passes out. If Anton's death didn't make it clear, this is an absolutely brutal film. They get both women into the car to try and rush them to a hospital. Back inside the house, it appears that the children have no idea what's going on. Hasbi gets angry when Dina beats him at a game of pool and begins to show his true colors. He takes out an airsoft rifle and points it at a rat. He then lashes out at Dina for being rich and even calls her a slut. On their way to the hospital, Hanif and Nadia realize that they have somehow been driving around in circles and are unable to leave the area. Hanif says that 25 years ago, Miss Mira began to use black magic and burned three girls to death as a sacrifice. He, Anton, and Jeffrey ran away from the orphanage because they were scared. However, every time they would try to leave, they always mysteriously found themselves back at the orphanage, unable to leave the grounds. Mr. Bandi and the boys captured Miss Mira and locked her inside of the room. Just like in Rani's story, Miss Mira repeatedly banged her head on the door to be let out. When they opened the door, she was already dead with her head cracked open. They buried Miss Mira in that very room and poured concrete over her. We see that young Maman and Siti also witnessed everything from the outside. While Hasbi tries to level up his hunting skills, something magically begins taking control of his body. The unknown force makes him grab a stapler and painfully staples his own mouth shut. While this scene is isn't overly scary, his terrified reaction and camera angles are what make this scene so effective. <laughs> 
Right outside, Haki decides he enjoyed the VHS of the creepy lady so much that he is going to watch it a second time. If we take a closer look, we see that this is the same VHS tape Mr. Bandy was watching in his room earlier. The VHS footage is totally creepy and every scare scene involving Ruth Marini is intensified. Unbeknownst to Haki, the footage he is watching is happening in real time as we see the ghost of Miss Mira walking out of the room and approaching the unsuspecting Haki. The TV suddenly shuts off and he sees Miss Mira's reflection on the screen standing directly behind him. Miss Mira then appears directly in front of him and he takes off running into the game room. This entire scene was masterfully crafted horror in my opinion. The creepy nature of the VHS tape combined with the sounds of the footsteps created a unique sense of tension which made for a very effective scare. He finds Hasby in the game room whose mouth is completely stapled shut. Still under the control of the unknown force, Hasby points the airsoft rifle at Haki and begins shooting at him. He is forced to place the rifle right on Haki Haki's forehead but manages to move it right on time to avoid shooting him. The adults return to the house and find that Haki is missing. While everyone looks for Haki, Nadia hears Miss Mira's creepy footsteps walking through the house. Outside, Jeffrey sees Lena feasting on poisonous caterpillars. This scene is absolutely disgusting and probably the scariest scene in the film if you have a fear of fuzzy things that crawl. Nadia is lured by Miss Mira into Mr. Bandy's room. Mira leads Nadia to discovering a mysterious box hidden underneath Mr. Bandy's bed. The box contains several photos of young girls revealing Mr. Bandy as a pedophile. She shows the pictures to Hanif and they realize that Miss Mira was actually trying to protect the girls from Mr. Bandy, which led to her death. Hanif believes that someone is trying to get revenge for Miss Mira's death. They find a picture of Siti which shows that she was also one of Mr. Bandi's victims. They suspect Maman and Siti for having invited them here, but they insist that they know nothing about what's going on. Siti reveals that she purposely poured hot water on her face so that Mr. Bandi would stop touching her. She said that it was Mr. Bandi who killed the three girls as a warning to the others to not say anything. Miss Mira resorted to using black magic to protect the girls and kill Mr. Bandi, but died before she could. We then learn that the girl hit by Hanif isn't actually dead as she walks into the house. Oh yeah, I totally forgot to mention the girl I hit on the way in. She says that on their way home, the bus lost control and crashed into the field. A woman walked onto the bus and the children seemingly became possessed. They began violently bashing their heads and died in the same way as Miss Mira. Enraged by all the revelations, Hanif walks into Mr. Bandi's room and begins to choke him. He is stopped by Nadia and must be completely broken realizing that the man who raised him was a monster this entire time. Hanif finds one more picture which reveals Murni was actually Miss Mira's daughter. Murni saw them bury her mother and is now exacting revenge for her death. Hasbi comes out holding an injured Haki saying it was an accident and they decide that it's finally time to go. A possessed Eva jumps on top of the car and tells Hanif that this is what it feels like to lose the ones you love. She briefly returns to normal but then begins banging her head on the windshield. Hanif yells out to Murni and begs her to stop. Murni finally shows herself and levitates over to the group. She begins to force choke Hanif, which makes complete sense as she definitely has the backstory of a Sith. Nadia grabs a sickle to defend her husband but is suddenly knocked out by Rani. Nadia wakes up back inside of the house and sees all her friends and family being viciously tortured. The torture scenes are pretty graphic and gruesome. Seeing Nadia watching her loved ones suffer while being unable to do anything about it was pretty heartbreaking. She then finally comes face to face with the Queen of Black Magic herself. Murni confirms that she is exacting revenge for what happened to her mother and holds Hanif responsible for helping Mr. Bandi. Rani is actually Murni's daughter which was hinted at a couple of times. In the beginning of the film, she insisted that her mother did not abandon her and that she would return. When Haki questions her about what happened to Murni, she gives a pretty long pause before answering. Murni says she doesn't know if hell exists after death. 
so she will make sure they experience hell on earth before she kills them all. She gives Nadia the sickle and says that her family will be released if she kills her own husband. She uses the sick method of intensifying her children's screams to force Nadia into killing Hanif. However, she didn't count on Haki pulling a Jamie Lannister and stabbing the Mad Queen in the back. Nadia quickly grabs the sickle and manages to decapitate her. However, we all know that dismembering body parts don't always kill a Sith Lord. Spoiler alert, just ask Darth Maul. Murni literally screws her head back on and looks angrier than ever. In a last ditch effort, Nadia grabs a candle and tosses it at Murni who quickly goes up in flames. The family rushes out of the room as Mr. Bandi waves at Hanif to get him the heck out of there. No. No, I don't think I will. He slams the door shut and Mr. Bandi goes up in flames with the Queen of Black Magic. Sometime later, we see that the family is recovering from the events at the orphanage. While picking Haki up from school, Nadia briefly sees Murni in her side view mirror. We then see whom I presume to be Mr. Bandi's children discussing the renovations of the orphanage. In the film's final scene, we get a very eerie shot inside of the house. We hear Miss Mira's footsteps getting closer and closer as the movie ends. During the end credits, we see several disturbing pictures from the original 1981 film that I may cover on the channel sometime in the future. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was the Queen of Black Magic. My friends, this movie reminded me why I love horror films in the first place. This film had it all, the gore, the interesting characters, the locked door that hasn't been opened in ages, and not to mention the staple creepy Asian lady. There were several disturbing and grotesque scenes that really managed to crawl under my skin and help the Queen of Black Magic obtain a solid scare score of 70%. The scariest scene of the movie has to be when Haki re-watches the VHS tape on his own and encounters the spirit of Miss Mira. The tension and atmosphere in that scene alone was enough to put it way ahead of every other scare in the film. Add Ruth Marini into the mix and you've got a recipe for a pretty good and memorable scare. The ending of the film definitely leaves room open for a sequel. It appears like Mira and Murni aren't quite finished yet and Rani may want to follow her mother's footsteps and take revenge. I definitely recommend you check out The Queen of Black Magic and the 1981 original which are both currently streaming on Shudder. But as always, I hope you all enjoyed the video. Thank you all for tuning in and I cannot wait to see y'all right back here in the Horror Mine. Y'all stick around.